over to Bears Review. Tonight, guys, is a special occasion, not just because it's side-by-side -side review time of a big-ass, double-fisted drinking beer occasion. No, it's beer review number 950 time. We're on our way to beer review number 9,000, and we got to make a little pit stop for some two-fisted drinking at beer review number 950, don't we? Hell yes. So, where are we going to go to acquire our beers for said review tonight? We're going to go to Tool out of Copenhagen, Denmark. And what beers are we going to have from them? We're going to have their Goliath and their Barrel Age Goliath. That's right. Both are Russian Imperial Stouts that have been aged on coffee, and the other one has been aged in bourbon barrels. Both of them are 2015 vintage. Now, both of these beers were also brewed at De Prof in Belgium. Why? Because Tool is a gypsy brewer. That's right. Now, both of these beers clock in at 10%. 10.1%, that is, ABV. They got to get that 0.1% in there, I suppose. And between 50 and 100 IBUs, they don't tell us that. In these beers, they're using simple ingredients. Water, hops, malt, and barley. Roasted barley, that is. But for malts, what are they using for malts? They're using Pilsner, smoked, roasted corn. Oh, roasted corn, I, I like roasted corn, it tastes good. Chocolate, aroma malt, or aromatic malt, I suppose. And Cara Crystal, which is probably like Cara Pills. And for adjuncts in these beers, they're using dark cassonade sugar, um, oats, and coffee. And then in this one, they're using an adjunct, which is, of course, the barrels. Now, for hops in this, they're using Columbus and Simcoe. Yeah, I had to, like, study between these two. They're the same beer. One's just bourbon barrel age, but they don't tell you all the information at one spot. Sometimes when you're beer geek, you got to get your dig on and get your information. So, without further ado, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to pop the top on the non-barrel age variant first because we got to go somewhere and we're going to start with the non-barrel age. So what we're going to do is we're going to slit our top here to make this kind of foil come off quite easy. I also have done a video on this in the past. So if you'd like to check that out, you know, feel free. So let's pop the top on this bad boy and tell you what's up with the Goliath Imperial Coffee Stout, not barrel aged. Mm, a big hiss off the top. Tons of cannon smoke. <clears throat> I need a beer. My voice is getting a little gruff. Can't have that. Oh, it's a green bottle. Lovely. Oh, look at that freaking black tar just pouring into the glass. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Yeah, that says deliciousness to me. <sighs> Especially once we get to these higher beer review numbers. we we'll cap that off. So, let's see what's up with the appearance. Not like I have to look. It is completely black in the glass. We have a solid half finger head of super tightly packed bubbles. <clears throat> a little soap sudsy in the center. When I swirl it, it is totally coating the inside of this glass. We're getting some glass lacing. And, like I said, tons of coating alcohol legs just streaming on the inside of that glass. Look at that. To me, that is gorgeousness in the glass because at heart, deep down inside, though, I'm a hophead. I'm truly a malt maniac when you really get down to it. So, these beers, a big portion of them, is about the aroma, especially if there's coffee in it. Diving in. Damn, big, big coffee. Dark roast up in your grill. A little bit of fudgy chocolate. Dark chocolate. Caramel. Bit of tobacco. Deep, dark roasted notes. Mm, but it is all about coffee and chocolate, a bit of dark fruit coming in the background, a little bit of earthy hop. Mm, but the coffee is big and present. It smells awesome. I'm diving in, guys. Cheers to review number 950. Hell yes. Going for 1,000 plus. Ha <laughs> ha. Mm. Ha <laughs> ha. Hell yeah. Mm. Wow. Right up at the front in your face big big coffee after that dark fruits chocolate dark chocolate very high cacao dark chocolate to me caramel mm. and in the back end a lot of earthy hop and roast notes <clears throat> it's playing a little more as roast notes than earthy hop maybe the 10.1 percent abv is totally hidden it's a little thinner than i thought it may be it pour, looked like when it was pouring, it was thicker than it actually is. It's a medium full body, not big full body, like maybe you get from Bourbon County Branched Out, something like that. As you drink it, <clears throat> a little bit of bitterness builds because there's a big amount of sweetness in this. And the bitterness is building is that of like sort of like spent coffee grounds or earthy hop bitterness. But man, super tasty beer. I am digging this. So, like I always do with these big side by side reviews, I'm going to kick it for a little bit, enjoy this one, and then I'll be back with additional
comments maybe about this and that will pass final judgment and all that old shit. See you in a minute. Okay, gang, I'm back. I've been kicking it with regular Goliath Imperial Coffee aged out or whatever the fuck they want to call it for about a half hour now. Actually, not a half hour. Probably like 20 minutes just sipping on this bad boy. It's a real smooth operator and as it opens up, it's a lot more fruity and, and like big, really like a lot of big plummy and, or prune type flavors coming out of it. Really tasty beer, but it's all about the coffee and chocolate and stuff and that. Yum. So, let's get into the bourbon barrel aged one. Slit our foil here. Ah, <laughs> can't wait to get into this one. Oh, we have a different color cap on this one. A silver plain cap. Woohoo! All right. Damn. These Belgian crowns. Damn. I'm gonna bust my bottle opener. Holy shit. Mm. Man. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I hate Belgian crowns. They're a pain in the ass. But anyways, enough bitching. Let's pour beer. Oh, yeah. Oh, this one looks a little darker almost going into the glass. Look at that head. Bigger head on this one, too. Wowzers. All right. So, while that chills a minute, we'll cap this up. I don't even know if I'm going to stick this back on because it'll be so difficult to get off. But anyways, yeah, I'm bitching again. So, appearance-wise on this, same as the other one, the non-bourbon barrel agent was black as pitch, solid one-finger head of actually tighter pack bubbles, darker head, more of a cocoa color, darker shade of cocoa. But still, when you swirl it, I think we're going to actually get a good bit of glass lacing with this variant. And there's still tons and tons of alcohol like just coating the inside of that glass. Look at that, guys. <sighs> More malt awesomeness. Time for another cheers to this beer review number 950. <laughs> this is a good night. Anyways, let's dive in. Cheers. Oh, wait. I'm cheers and I'm going to drink it. I didn't even smell it. <laughs> Oh, shit, I need more beer. Let's see what's up with the aroma. Mmm, man. I'm glad I smelled this first. Wow. Big caramel, toffee, bourbon, vanilla, tobacco, leather. Wow. A lot more layers of aroma in this. Dark fruit. Mmm, man. There's a sweet melange of bourbon, coffee, and vanilla all at the same time. The coffee's not as big and prevalent. It happens a lot in barrel-aged stouts, as it is in this one, as the original. But man, a lot more complexity of aroma. Fig, raisin, maybe a little tiny bit of a licorice note. Mm, but that bourbon, man, when you swirl it, you get this hit of bourbon and coffee. Mm, man, this freaking smells delicious. Caramel, toffee, burnt brown sugar, damn, too many to... The name Coconut. Coconut Joe. Average Joe. Coconut. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, diving in. Cheers. Again. <laughs> mm. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Awesome glass lacing. Incredibly coating. Usually, in a barrel age of beer, the body is thinner on the barrel aged variant than the non barrel aged variant but this actually seems more viscous I don't know if maybe they added more into this beer because they were going to put it maybe they put a little like a heavier oat addition they got the same ABV but maybe they put a little heavier oat addition in this but ma'am right up front you see it's good I'm taking another drink while I'm trying to explain it to you maybe that's for inspiration but right up front you're greeted with the bourbon the coffee is less evident and the what coffee is in there comes off mm, not as much as coffee as it does as dark roasted malt. There's a lot of earthy hop to this one. They're the same vintage, but like you know, time brewed. But wow, man, delicious beer. There, it's a, there. I don't get. I got coconut in the aroma. I don't get it in the taste. I get a good bit of vanilla. A lot of barrel char taste in the background. It drinks really nice, and the bourbon is not overdone. It's complementing those stout tastes a lot. As I drink it, I get more of those figgy notes that I got from this one. Mm. So, like with this one, I'm going to sit here and kick it a little with, bit with the bourbon barrel age one. But man, this freaking already tastes awesome. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, gang, I'm back. I've been kicking 
kicking it with both these lovely brews for a few minutes here. Put another about 20 minutes into this one. Took a sip here, sip there. And of the two, um, just because I'm me, I prefer the bourbon barrel aged variant. Not just because it's bourbon barrel aged, but I like the real, like, greater depth of aroma complexity and also flavor co complexity. But there's different reasons on these beers. If you're more into coffee and you're looking for that coffee stout experience, that's more the uh, regular Goliath. The the bourbon barrel aged Goliath has more has less coffee flavor. There's coffee notes and roasted notes, but they don't come off as like a coffee treated stout. They come off as a an imperial stout that's brewed to have big coffee flavors. You know, kind of like you get sometimes from Brooklyn Black Chocolate Stout when it's real fresh. So th I'm getting that from this. But the level of complexity, the for some reason, better mouthfeel on this one. I don't like I said. I don't know if they do more oat addition to this one or what. But man, I'm totally digging on this. Though this is an awesome beer too. So let me let's grade the non bourbon barrel age variant first, and then we'll move on to this one, and we'll just have a good old time. Hell yes. Mm. Okay. So, regular Goliath Imperial Coffee Stout. So, um, what does Rape Beer give it? Well, it's a 10% beer, so bam, 100. <laughs> what a surprise. Beer Advocate gives it a 93, a minus. And Untapped is giving it 4.06 caps, which is probably that A range, I would say. I'm going to go 95 on this. High and yeah, 96. High A range, very well brewed. Very well hidden alcohol, super tasty. I would drink it again any day of the week. This beer would taste awesome. Like put on some like toasted coconut in a coffee press, maybe a little chili in it as well. But this is a very very well made stout. I'd drink it again. Tool has really impressed me. I've had their salt milk and a couple other Tool beers that I can't remember the names just because I drink a lot and I forget shit. But really super tasty. I'm giving this a high A. All right now. Goliath bourbon barrel aged um, as a coffee stout imperial coffee stout like it says here on bourbon barrel aged imperial stout with coffee and aged in bourbon barrels okay it, it, I think it meets that criteria that it's saying on the label because it's not saying I'm straight up all about coffee in your grill and the bourbon barrel aged part is the flashier part on the label and actually more part of the taste so let me take another taste before we give you the numbers That's just awesome. Anyway, great beer. Um, was Rape Beer graded? So, Rape Beer gives it a 99. Bam, A+. Plus. Oh, what a surprise. Beer Advocates give it an 86, which is just into that B plus range, you know, virgin on B still. And Untapped gives it 4.12 caps, which is that high A range. Um, I'm going to go almost A plus on this, 97. Very well made. The only thing that makes it fall off is it's missing a little bit of the coffee. I don't know if I got this fresh enough. All I know that these are both 2015 vintage, but <clears throat> in that time of recording, I think uh, after I looked at the cryptic numbers, these are about like uh, like got four months age on them. So that's not that much for a beer like this. But remember, since it's bourbon barrel age, it could have three months, a year on it already. So coffee's going to fade in that time. Mm, I get it. So both of them. Super well-made beers. I like this one a little more. I just dig the, the flavors more. The only thing that holds it back from an A-plus for me is it doesn't have that big up-in-your-grill coffee presence. Like maybe you get from Bourbon County brand coffee stout. You know, that kind of thing. But still, awesome beer. Super well-made. And I would drink either of these beers and buy them again any day of the week. They're not cheap. I think these were probably like 12 or 13 bucks a bottle, somewhere in that neighborhood. But well worth it. Well-crafted beers. You know what? It's the, the values in the eye of the person who's drinking it, right? Or the, the taste and the palate of the person who's drinking it. So, we got to get to the thank yous and all that kind of stuff now. First of all, you got to do something important. You got to think locally, drink locally, and support the craft beer movement. You know, we've been talking that, about that for 950 fucking reviews for now, right? Also, you got to get a really gigantic thank you from me for sitting through 950 reviews with me. As I wax, fantastic, you know. So this will be like 950 and 951. 
so you get the bonus plan in this review number 950. Is that fucking awesome or what? So, or maybe it'll be 49 and 50. I'll have to figure that shit out when I post it because some of these like this, we got to, you know, plan ahead on. And not that I do much of that, but you already know about the digression and the, the, the forgetting shit. It's how it goes. So, to the next EJ's Brew Tube, like I said, thanks a million to each and every one of you for rating, commenting, subscribing, especially if this is your first time with this, for staying with us this long. And also, every time, smashing that like button. Because that, along with just a bottle of each of these, puts my big, gigantic ass happy face on. So, on to be review number 9,000. 9, Hell yeah, fucking 9,000 and 1,000 before that. And, like I said, uh, once again, I'm, I know I sound like a fucking broken record, but that's what we do when we make our own reviews. Thank you very much. So, till then, I got nothing but a bunch of Goliath... Regular variant and bourbon barrel age drinking love for you from Tool. And you know what's coming. That's right. <laughs> it's the end of all these videos. A big ass. Peace out.